So welcome to our weekly Let's Talk Cars. And there's lots to go through, but we've got two key points for today. We've changed the Q5. Um, I've still got it at the moment, but I've changed it to another hybrid. I really miss the Range Rover hybrid I had, but obviously it had some fundamental flaws, as in it wasn't a plug-in one. Um, there was this, this stereo system wasn't great. I tried to put Apple CarPlay in, but it didn't work that well. But everything else about the car I loved. Now, it's a difficult one because I like the Q5, but when we go away, it's a little bit small um, in the boot area and just having enough room. But also because I'm going to be picking up my daughters and there's two of them to pick up now, I wanted more space, more room, lots more sets of golf clubs, etc., etc. So I'm really excited to announce that we've got a Range Rover Hybrid. I didn't buy a new one as normal. I bought second hand. Um, I think the retail price on this car was about 136 and we got in at about 75. Uh, 25,000 mile car. It's in a special velocity blue. The spec is really good and it took me a little bit of time because I didn't realize the plug-in ones had dropped as much as they had. So I managed to get a VAT qualifying one, <coughs> you know, 75K. Um, but some of the spec I wanted, I missed, because it's been so hot in England, I've really missed that, that fridge in the front. So I've got that back now, so I'm happy with that. Um, sliding sunroof, panoramic roof, really like that feature as well, so it's got that. It's an autobiography, so when I went on the search, I went autobiography, because that's like the top spec. Then Range Rover, plug-in, and I think there was about 53 on Auto Trader. Then I tried to get it down to ones that have got fridge. Now the other thing I had when I sold the last one was that it had this rear executive seating. So it was only a four seater. And that made it a little bit difficult to sell because most people want five seater. So now I've got the five seater but it's got this rear executive sort of flip down that comes down um, gives them the cup holders and everything else so <clears throat> I haven't seen that yet but that retains me the five seats and gives me this option of this executive seating in the back uh, it's got heated seats um, but also it's got massage and it's got stone massage hot stone massage I don't know so <laughs> again it's going to be quite interesting to use but I do like the idea of the cool on function on the seats it's been so hot in England, uh, it's only getting hotter as we know, and I think I, I'd rather prefer to have that. So for the money, I think it's a really good buy. You know, you look at the electric cars, a lot of them are, like the Q4, I was specking one on there, it's still coming out at 72. So I'm in a Range Rover, it says 31 miles on the plug-in, probably be a bit less than that. But for my drives, you know, home to work, I can, have a charger at work have a charger at here does it matter petrol's actually dropping i think it's now like 175 um which is which is getting better i mean it probably will hopefully a chase down to the 150s again but the q5 <coughs> hasn't been costing a lot to run um now that had a bit more on the electric sort of i think 37 but i miss that range rover i really miss it i, I think it's such a great car um oh the other benefit we can put Strap Dan in the back with the thing and he can do all the camera work and we won't lose him. That's another good benefit because it's got that drop down um, rear boot. So you've got sort of two sections, one drops down you can sit on, but we can actually push that up and then Dan will strap him in the back and I can chase around some lanes. No, we can drive nice and slow and he can record the P1, which we still need to pick up. But we thought we need to make a really good film on that. So. He's going to jump in the back, do the videoing. Uh, other points on their Apple CarPlay, this one's got it built in. So it's only a 2019, it's only three years old, one owner car, about 25,000 miles. It's got some other extras which we'll show you when they're there, but the side steps come out when you get in. It's quite nice um, and, you know, makes it a lot easier. But there's so many features on that Range Rover, I can't wait to go through it with you and all the extras. I'm trying to remember them all off by heart, but loads of good stuff on that car so the next thing uh, we went to festival italia at the weekend really enjoyed that took the mercia largo sv 
Uh, Harrison from VVS arranged that. Big shout out to him. We had a great day. Uh, there's like little VIP boxes at the top. I've never been in them before, but actually it's a, it's a brilliant view of the track. Because being one of the few tracks you can actually see you know all the bends uh, obviously the Grand Prix circuit goes out but you see most of the top track um, which is fantastic they had some run of some uh, F1 cars historic F1 cars the noise I just can't imagine 20 F1 cars like they had there on the grid going through the noise must have been absolutely incredible with <laughs> blow you away to tell the truth they only had three or four but that you know at full chat must have been the, the era of James Hunt and all them there must have been absolutely incredible takeaways from it I didn't see that many cars I wanted to buy there um, I saw that there was a Lamborghini let's go through the section there. so they had Lamborghini uh, saw some nice Performantes in purple and Evos and they all look pretty good there was one in a special purple that VVS sold there um, yeah, it looked good. Then I wanted to see Ferrari because Ferrari had that range of cars there, which was quite interesting to see them all together. So I saw the Roma. It looked quite nice, actually. I think it does look a bit like an Aston, and they're sort of 180, 200k. Uh, but I wanted to see the 296. Um, they had a, I think it was a GTS or GT. Um, not convinced on the looks I'd, I'd like obviously it was in a marquee so it's a little bit difficult and it was surrounded by other cars there it feels like it's two cars and i don't know if it's because it's got these buttresses at the back that come up and it i feel like it's two cars um i feel like the front comes along then where it goes up i don't know i don't know what you guys think if you've seen them or maybe it was me because it was in a marquee but the actual spec of the car and how they drive and that apparently is awesome. You've got hybrid technology. I think it's Ferrari at its best. But just the look of it, I was thinking if you're spending, I mean, apparently you, you can spec them to like, a lot of them are 350K. It's a lot of money. Um, but, you know, if you're into that type of thing and you've got lots of other cars, I, I just can't quite see it as someone wanting a Ferrari as a daily at 350K. But the other thing is they're sold out they're sold out apparently to 2026 so obviously Ferrari have done a great job and there's lots of people with this type of money who want to buy them the other car that stood out for me is SF90 I saw one at London Concours it's really growing on me that car um, and it's probably one of the only ones where I thought actually if that drops down a lot because there's a lot for sale and they've made they're going to make you know it's a production car so it's not a special edition but it's a thousand horsepower it's looking really good really good and that could be a car for the future it needs to drop a bit more for me um, I think if it was to drop in the 350s I think they're about 429 350s 300 would be mega what car what more do you need I mean thousand horsepower I think it's four-wheel drive it's got hybrid I think 17 miles or 18 miles so you're future proofed that really really stood out for me other bits there I love all the old Bath owners club that was fantastic uh, Lancia's there uh, not that many Lancia's but there was a few sort of Evos um, a few rally cars there we also <coughs> managed to get into race room saw Dan there put Harrison in the sim he was actually quite good um, managed to set quite a good time I think I was first on the day um, but still didn't beat Dan which is a bit annoying uh, but then I went on I said change the car let's go to an F1 car and I wanted to show a few people the sim who are interested in buying them from us and you had a mega lap at Silverstone and the speed is just phenomenal then they said Richard you got to go on the parade lap which I didn't even know I was doing so I was jumped so I'm on the sim driving brands in an f1 car then I had to jump out get the mercy started and get on the parade lap and that was really surreal because obviously i'm just driving it on the sim then i'm in the mercy largo going down the hill oh it's fantastic and it was it was very interesting going on the track after being in the sim so i thought the track seemed a lot bigger seemed a lot wider and i thought i could set a good time around here so i went back saw dan at race room 
and we're putting up some pictures now of the parade and that but I said Dan come on what can we do and he said yeah Richard I can get you a, a race car let's do it you go in the sim similar car like a Porsche GT4 or something and then we'll put you on the track I can't wait for that I re I'm really excited after going round it in the SV and I'm looking at my lines looking at where I could improve on the sim I think it'd be a really nice experiment to do um, so I can't wait for that, I bet you're looking forward to that as well. I've had some people ask about that before, but that looks like it's on its way. So yeah, that's a quick sort of update on two things. There's so much more happening, which there have to be more sort of uh, Let's Talk Cars videos. But yeah, it was a great event, thanks to VVS. And yeah, I'll see you soon and we'll give you another weekly update.